Hey guys, we're going to be putting some videos up uh, here soon, next day or two or so, um, that a lot of you young boxers or boxers in general can look at that uh, of old school calisthenics uh, that we utilize. Uh, that I learned back in the uh, 70s, early 70s, and things that have really been been around uh, since the 60s for sure, and uh, before then, uh, that will increase your durability as a boxer. Um, we've got a class coming along here of amateurs that, in my opinion, is a lot better than the class of professionals that we have in the United States. And, but one thing from the class of professionals that we have right now uh, to the class that's going to be moving up that are in the amateurs at present is durability problems and when I'm talking about durability I'm not talking about uh, stamina per se I'm talking about the physicality to be able to take punches um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, what folks call chess playing and 3d chess playing going on but I'm seeing a lot of weak quitters and uh, in the professional ranks and uh, I'm not seeing that in the amateur ranks and certainly not seeing that from any of the guys that that we watch or we're fans of in the amateurs uh, but we are going to be putting out uh, some videos here and there of some things that we do that I really believe will be of benefit to you newfangled people that uh, are learning all these new ways to do things uh, that are producing people that can't take body punches and uh, can't take uh, strong fighters. And we're, we're going to put some things up that we hope that will help you younger guys coming up uh, uh, that you'll be even better and uh, most of you, if, if whether you're even older trainers or, uh, or uh, and certainly boxers, aren't really going to get this. But we had uh, basically the Dundee method, uh, as we used to call it, uh, where you would just absolutely lift no weight other than your body weight and I don't agree with that at all uh, we had other schools of thought that had fighters such as uh, Floyd Patterson and uh, Sonny Liston uh, two different ends of the spectrum but uh, they would do dumbbell work and some other resistance training uh, that made their bodies more durable and I think we've took the Dundee method although I'm not criticizing in any way shape or form uh, and I'm labeling it as we labeled it it could be called something different today uh, the folks around me could have been calling it uh, something uh, that it's not generally labeled but that's what we called it and that's what I was taught uh, which is lift nothing but your body weight. And I, I just don't believe that. And I believe that's been taken to an extra step with this cross training. And I, and I believe that people trying to uh, get their cardio uh, abilities higher have lacked tremendously in the past couple of decades that they have sacrificed their durability and just threw it out the door. And 
I'm real old school and I'm of the opinion uh, and rightfully so. I can judge the opinion rightfully so because I lived the 60s and 70s and I, and, and 80s as well and into some of the 90s. And I uh, when have lived up to today, uh, October the, the 5th of 2023. And I've seen it all, and what uh, and some uh, a lot of these older bikes and guys that I talked to were generally all in agreement. In general, uh, that these guys today uh, couldn't carry a champion of the '60s or '70s belt, and I'm of the opinion that almost anybody in any weight class, uh, any weight division from 1960 to 79 or 80 could literally mop the floor up with any of the alphabet champions uh, of today. And anybody, you could just take your pick there and take your pick here and the guy in the 60s and 70s would lay a shellacking on the guy today. Anyway, class, it don't make a damn. Uh, uh, it could be Canelo. It could be any of these guys. Um, there's a lot of things that go on. A lot of you guys, you see Joe, uh, when he gets on the reflex bag, he works the hell out of that thing. He can work a reflex bag. Uh, he normally weighs, on average, 40 to 60 pounds more than Ryan Garcia, and he can work that bag almost as good as Ryan Garcia. And uh, that's to say a lot for a bigger fella working working a bag like Garcia. And uh, But that's play time. That, that's playing around. That's having fun. Uh, there's a lot of other work involved in this sport that these guys aren't doing today. And we are, God bless Ryan Garcia. I don't mean nothing bad towards him. Uh, but we seen his last result. He run up on a strong, physically strong guy. And uh, and he quit. And that's what happened. And uh, we're seeing this left and right today. Uh, saw a fight last week. We got two guys. Uh middleweights or thereabouts, I'll leave you wondering. Uh, one of the guys got in there and fought to exist. Uh, a lot of talk maybe through the fight. I don't see how you throw a fight in 12 rounds. Uh, that's another thing. They've lowered the, uh, uh, the number of rounds down to 12, and these guys still aren't fighting as hard as they did uh, back in the old, old time days. And it's just a cotton pick and shame. In this class we got coming up, uh, uh, I'm going to show you some differences. I'm going to show you what the, some things with uh, back work, for example, that the U.S. Olympic team promotes and coaches. Uh, and I'm going to show you what we do uh, uh for back conditioning and durability and uh, lasting power and strength and muscle. And uh, you can look at a little bit of what we do and you can decide, yeah, I like that or, uh, or decide against it and continue your way. Uh, you should do what's comfortable for you. This ain't a, I know more than everybody else thing, or I know something that others don't know. I just know what I see. Uh, it's as simple as that. It's no rocket science, no 3D chess, no uh, trying to get an angle uh, above and beyond hard work with anything that, that I do or that we do. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of the uh, psychology in the sport is weak. I'm seeing that... Uh, uh, a lot of the uh, having the ability to adjust in ring is weak. Uh, yet uh, there's 
45 other moves and fancy footwork and this thing and that thing, yet uh, boxers cannot adjust in the ring, even in the amateurs. And uh, I don't, I, I really don't know what's going on. Uh, I think it's a, a failure of a lot of corners, uh, trainers, coaches, whatever you choose to call them nowadays. Uh, and I think it's uh, uh, a lot, a lot to do with failure of uh, fighters doing what corners are telling them to do, and the inability to rely on their corners and such. So. Uh, uh, which goes into the psychology and the learning process, and we're always learning. Uh, but the psychology of the sport seems to have been lost, and uh, we got to work on that. And a lot, these things I'm talking about, I'm talking about from a U.S. Uh, perspective. Uh, we are getting walloped. Um, Newsflash to my American brothers and sisters, we don't deserve to have a heavyweight uh, world champion right now. Uh, another newsflash, we really only had uh, past 15 or 18 years uh, a couple of guys uh, holding a minor bell, uh, including Deontay Wilder, whom I love. Uh, but he didn't really fight anybody other than uh, uh, the Fury. And we see what happened there. We keep sending guys to England or we keep sending guys to fight Ukrainians uh, or Russians. And we continually fail. And we got to get back to uh, the hard work, uh, the emotional and psychological fortitude that we used to have and that we still possess, but we fail to use amongst a lot of other things. And it is my great hopes and um, in my aspirations that you young U.S. boys that, uh, uh, that are amateur boxers, that if I can just give you one area or one uh, thing that helps you succeed, that's what I'm about. Uh, you just choose what you want to do and always check with your trainer first, the guy that's hands-on with you. I'm not a rocket science uh, scientist over here. Uh, I just know what I see and I've been watching things for now 55 years here and I know what I've been seeing the past 20 years and uh, the decline and uh, it is my great hope and, and aspiration that we start uh, uh, fielding Olympic teams that can win again and that we can uh, at least start really contending for uh, the World Heavyweight Championship or at least one of the belts and uh, start moving forward in a more uh, productive manner. But one thing I can say, and young folks, you will know what we're doing ain't working. So it's time to, uh, instead of trying everything else under the sun except what did work for us in the past, maybe we need to try to go back to some of these old ways and what we did in the past. And some of the things we're going to do, uh, there'll be some dumbbell work, uh, uh, there will be some pulley work because it was work we used to do on pulleys, but we will now do it on uh, weight machines, and we'll show you what we do. And one of the classic things we do, I'll probably put out tomorrow, I'll show you what the Olympic team, U.S. Olympic team, is uh, uh, in encouraging uh, our uh, future Olympians to do and some of the things to train and how more vigorously we train. And uh, you can bet your bottom dollar that the people that were in control and uh, putting out the information back in the 60s and 70s were doing what we're doing, and it worked. And you see today what they're putting out, it just ain't working. So uh, hopefully some of you guys will 
come watch and hopefully even if we can have just one fella out uh i should say guy or gal now because you've got uh, uh, women boxing if we can just have one one person out it'll be worth us showing somebody but there again keep in mind we don't put a whole lot out and i'm not going to start giving out everything that that we do nor will i sell it uh it's not nothing, none of the boxing stuff we do is for sale. I'm not going to make a dime off of anything, and nor do I choose to. Uh, what I give, what I choose to give, I freely give, and if someone wants to accept it, they can. And uh, if someone wants to think it's hogwash, they're entitled to that as well. Uh, but I will tell you, young folks and trainers, uh, what we're doing ain't working too well. So, uh, and the fruit of it is the fruit we are bearing is a lot of quitters. Uh, a lot of people they get punched in the gut and they want to give it up. They uh, get hit in the side a little too hard and they want to give it up. They get hit in the eye a little too hard and they want to give it up. Uh, so a lot of this is psychological as well. And I spend, uh, we train twice a day. Uh, we have anywhere from an hour and a half to two and a half hours on one or both or a combination thereof of training. Uh, five days a week, we do one session on Saturday. In 15 or 20 minutes of sitting and listening to my mouth run uh, with stories, examples uh, of fortitude and how to be strong and examples thereof. And uh, maybe we'll start sharing a little bit of that psychology as well. I don't know. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So hang on. Hope everybody comes and uh you, any of you younger boxers, you want to get stronger, you want to have a stronger punch, you uh, want to have better durability about yourself. Uh, I truly believe these simple things we're going to put out is going to be able to help you. So stay on the lookout the next day or two. Uh, blessings to everyone and to my Christian brothers and sisters. May the Lord Jesus, our King of Kings, uh, bestow insight for you. Much love, everybody.